In pursuit of Skeletor on your trusty steed, you should look at the Mattel Masters of the Universe Origins Stridor. The Strider figure comes with three plasma blasts to take down Skeletor and his evil crew, as well as a helmet and bridle with real cord. Collectors can display him in epic poses using 19 articulated joints, including the legs, neck, tail, and mouth, and an included display stand that connects to the Masters of the Universe Origins Castle Grayskull playset. Excited to see Strider? Hold your horses before, of course, we get, uh, before, of course, we get a closer look at Strider. Had to. We're going to bring in the ruler, of course, to see how long and tall Strider is. We're going to start first with its length. From its snout to its tail, do horses have snouts? Asking for a friend. From the snout to the tail, Strider is 10 inches in length, or about 25 and a half centimeters tall. And then we're going to flip that up on its end. Go, of course, from the bottom of its feet to the bottom of its hooves to the top of its helmeted head. Strider is eight and a half inches in height, or just a little over 21 centimeters tall. Hoping it helps, we can bring in some of the other Master Universe figures to compare along with Strider. DYK, that's, did you know? Did you know I have looked at extensively the Master Universe Origins reviews here on this channel, covering off most, if not all, the toy lines so far. If you haven't had yet the chance to check out my playlist, there is one available. You can watch at your viewing pleasure. A shameless plug. We're going to bring in now a couple of figures. Now, I think for most of the time when we do see Strider in art, it's usually written by Fisto. For that reason, I'm going to bring in Fisto. It doesn't have to necessarily be Fisto. If you prefer to be written by He-Man, yeah, we can bring in He-Man as well. Somebody's yelling in the background. Well, what about Zodak? Can Zodak ride? <laughs> I guess so. I just happen to have Zodak here. You were reading the script quite well, sir. Yeah, yeah, you can't have Zodak. Although I think of the three figures, Zodak is least likely to be riding around on Strider. But it's just, again, to show you any one of these figures using the same mold, of course, that's quite a, very apparent with this toy line. Any one of these figures can actually sit well inside of Strider. Some of them fit a little bit better than others, as you'll see in a second. Oh, and if you wanted to see what Strider looked like with some of the other Master Universe Origins vehicles, we can do that. We can do that. We're going to free up a little bit of space, slide him over just a little bit to bring in the Land Shark. Land Shark, while looking at the two, is quite considerably longer, but you could certainly give the height to Strider as he's much taller. I don't know if I would consider him a vehicle, but he's certainly an accessory to the Master Universe Origins line. And there's what he looks like next to the Land Shark. And yes, in case you guys are also curious, we can bring in. The Wind Raider, one of my favorite vehicles so far that they have released. Strider fits in still well, and actually both of these can also interact, well, connect-wise with their display stands to Castle Grayskull. It was something that worked with the Wind Raider. It's also something that comes along with Strider, which I'll show you also in a second. Here's the display stand that comes included with Strider. Some assembly was required when you first get it out of the box. There's these two posts, these two fence sides. This one was already assembled and part of the base when you get it out of the box. This is the one that you have to install. I have noticed that once you do attach this to the display base, it's quite in there. I wouldn't recommend trying to pull this out for the wrist that you could potentially break the pegs once they have been slotted in place. You may notice a rather familiar Castle Grayskull green color. This part's going to actually connect to the back of the castle. The other little bit of assembly that was required was actually taking the adjustable neck and plugging this in place, which can actually be removed depending on how you want to have a strider displayed. If you wanted to have it, the horse, for example, just on all fours, sort of resting at the gate side, then you can do that. If you did want to have it more in a pose, though, you can simply just attach this, plug it in place, and then you've got an adjustable ratchet joint that's on the top that plugs into the underside of strider's body. Flipping the horse upside down, you can see inside, there's a hole right there. And that's actually going to be able to plug onto this. But we're just going to leave it off for the time being. I'm going to put that right there. And then we're going to go ahead and take Ben Strider. And again, if you just wanted to have the horse sort of staged here, you can have the horse attached. Now, it doesn't really give you much clearance, though. You can already see the length of the display base isn't as long as the length of the horse. So there's going to be a little bit of overhang. That's still going to plug into the bottom side, the back of the Castle Grayskull playset. So you are going to get a little bit of extra length. But I wish actually that they would have made this much longer already to start off with if you plan to display the horse on its own without the display base attaching to Castle. 
Anyways, though, if you certainly did want to attach then the display stand, or it gets the adjustable neck to this place and just, again, take the rectangular, somewhat rectangular shape, plug it into the hole that's provided. And then from there, you can then attach this to the underside of the horse. Now, with these being adjustable, you can have the horse on its hind legs, for example, and that just plugs into the bottom of the horse, and then you can just ratchet it up. So you can have Strider once fully, of course, there you go, fully attached. You can actually have it making, well, making it look at least like Strider is up on its hind legs. And I think that's really cool. You can actually do it the other way as well, having the front of the legs down and having the back hind legs looking as if it's kicking maybe a Skeletor minion behind him. I think that's really cool. Bringing in CG for a second, that's Castle Grayskull, by the way. We're going to then take ourselves the display stand that came in clue with Strider, and this is going to attach to the back of the castle. It doesn't attach in the sense that it actually connects. What it is is this lower ledge that's on the bottom of it. See how it drops a little bit lower than the base? That's going to slide under the little bit of allowance that's underneath the castle. See how the castle lifts up about, what, a half inch or so? And that's basically just what you're going to be doing. You're sliding this underneath. It doesn't have a designated spot. You can have it on this side of the castle, or if you prefer, you can have it on this side. I think I would usually have to have it probably displayed near the doorway. It just makes a little bit more sense. It's a bit strange, though, because you would imagine that this would be the inside of the castle. And I can't imagine that Strider's standing inside of the castle. But anyways, we're going to stick with what we have to work with. This is just going to slide underneath. And just plugs in like that. Again, plugging is really not the best word to use to describe this. It's just literally, literally sliding underneath that allotted clearance. But at least it allows you to connect the Strider. And the fact that it was smart on Mattel's part to, with all of these, really, all of these accessories and these vehicles we've been looking at as of late, that they all come included in one way, shape, or form. A display stand that can either connect to Castle Grayskull, like the Wind Raider on the top tower. Or in the case of Strider, it's just eh, literally a case that it's sliding underneath the back section of the castle playset. If you did want to see, though, what Strider looked like on the other side of the castle, closest to the elevator, here he is here. Now, one of the problems of docking him on this side is that this floor here is lower than the floor that's closest to the door. So, and even though Strider does still manage to fit underneath the floor, it's pretty close. Not to the point where you're going to be able to scrape any of the plastic. In fact, easily, you can slide it out. But I think it's way too close to this floor, and more the reasoning why I would have it on the other side of the castle myself. I still think, like, the display stand going back to that point should have been a lot longer. If it was, say, just about that much longer then it wouldn't look like the horse is so close to this floor. I would imagine it'd be difficult to get onto this floor if you have to worry about a mechanical horse nearby. Again, you can have it on this side, which isn't so bad, but I, stu I still think, I really do think, like the display stand should have been a lot longer than what it was, not only just to have the horse displayed on its own with its display stand, but connecting it to Castle Grayskull just doesn't work, as the horse ends up being way too close to the playset. Stridor's display stand, I realize I've probably been calling him Strider this whole time, his display stand isn't, isn't the only thing that requires a little bit of assembly, as the horse also has two side-mounted cannons that have to be plugged onto the horse's body when you first get him out of the box. The cannons are pretty easy to add, although you may make the same mistake that I did and remove one of them. First of all, doesn't it look a little bit like Mosquito's head? When I first tried doing this, see how there's a longer, skinnier post, and then there's a more shorter, stumpier post. I went with the longer post, and you'll see right away the error of your ways when you try to plug this in place. The post is way too narrow. Instead, you're going to have to go the thicker, chunkier route, and that plugs very easily into the hole. And because they plug in the way that they do, it ends up affording you some additional articulation where you can move the cannons up and down. Moving it too quickly, though, I've noticed, does end up re releasing these cannons. And I've dropped one of them on the floor, I don't know how many times already. I think the reasoning also why they've made the post longer sticking out is that you can then take a He-Man figure, or any one of the Masters figures, for example, because of the gripping hand, you can attach it onto the side and certainly hold as like a cannon handle. Or you can also take the bridle of the horse, and I find it helps just to drape that around those as well, just to prevent them from draping onto the floor. We're going to take a He-Man figure. I'm going to start first with He-Man, and I'll, I'll grab Fisto as well and just show you how it sits inside the horse. Of course, we're going to grab ourselves a He-Man, bending the legs just a little bit. One thing about He-Man, though, is he does have the back section here that's going to hold his power sword. When you are first putting He-Man in, for example, to Stridor, you're going to notice it's sort of he's hitting the back of 
I guess, the cockpit area. You have to kind of shimmy him a little f further forward, get his arms out of the way, and then just sort of push him down, push him beyond the point that seems comfortable. But then He-Man actually sits well inside the horse, and then you can take the one of the gripping hands and just fits it around the side cannon. So it sort of looks like he's actually firing this because the other hand is more of a relaxed hand. You sort of just have him resting on that instead. So it actually looks like He-Man is firing the cannons on the side of the horse. Again, that's the only reasoning why I think that these little extra parts stick out the way that they do. You can also take the bridles and the bridle handles, and those fit also into He-Man's hands. This one, because he already has the gripping hand, you just snap it in place like that. This one though, because he does have the relaxed hand, you can take the loop part of it and just fit it over top of his hand like that. I know it does look strange that He-Man's going to be holding the bridle handles differently on both hands, but at least that's one way of having him holding both sides. Unless there was like a gripping hand on this side, then you can easily just repeat the steps, you know, rinse and repeat on the other side as well. So that's what He-Man looks like with the bridles in hand. Now, if you did want to do, say, something with like a Fisto figure, for example, sliding that out works the exact same way. Just, I know we're just rinsing and repeating the exact same step. But yeah, take Fisto. The only thing differently about Fisto is the fact he really won't be able to hold the bridle on this side for the obvious reasons that he's got a big giant fist. The figures all work the exact same way. Sliding the figures out. Let's have a look at some of the other things that come included here with Stridor. Now, one thing that's interesting is that Mattel included two different helmets. This red helmet kind of, I like myself. I just like because this one shows more of the eye area. This can be removed. Just pop that right off. And you still have some nice, interesting detail done underneath here, painted nicely in brown. And we've got the coloring of the very nice metallic blue. But if you wanted something almost similar to what Battle Cat has, then you can go with this helmet instead. And that fits just literally the exact same way. Use the ears sort of as your guide, and then they fit into those holes. And just fit that over top like that. And there's that option too. Because of the horn sticking out the top, he actually looks a little more like a unicorn than he does a horse. There's both options available. It's just a matter of preference. I still really like this one myself. But you can go with that one instead if you want to. I'm just going to take this off for the time being. Fit that over top. The other thing that the horse also comes included with is a couple of these blast effects. They're all done the exact same way. In fact, you get three of these. So I'll just pick them up all right now. They look like mirror copies. I don't think they are different at all from one to the other, but they're all done in a translucent blue plastic. And on the bottom of it, there's a little hole that's going to fit onto the cannons. Now, two cannons that we've already discussed on the front, they just fit on top like that. Do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to actually hold this one because this is the one that keeps falling off on me. And that just plugs into place. And then you can also take a cannon that's located on the back, which didn't have to be installed, by the way. And you can attach the third one in place like that. Now, I I like that they included it. I think it does make the horse look a little busy, though. Even though I like the idea that they include blast effects, I end up never really using it with any of these figures. But they're there. They're there if you really wanted to. Let's go ahead and take those off now. Pop the one, pop the other, and then pop the one off the back. I'm going to move the display stand certainly out of the way as well. Let's get a closer look now at Stridor. Strider, for at least my sake, didn't have to have any stickers needed to be applied. There's several stickers actually already on this horse. When you first get them out of the box, you don't have to install any of them, add any of them. There's a sticker here on the front, some stickers located on the side, sticker application here on the back, and stickers applied to the inside console. None of them you have to install. Thank goodness for that. As for the horse itself, I really like the look of Strider quite a bit. The figure is quite opposable, too, considering that really he is quite a hollow framed figure. His whole body feels quite light. Uh, the legs, of course, do have some posability that we'll talk more about in a second. It doesn't seem like there's really a lot of paint happening here. It looks like the face has probably been painted as well as the neck. And then, like, all the things, the appliance pieces, like the top helmet piece goes on. That's molded in red plastic as well. It could be said for the cannons. The cockpit area, the seats all molded in that yellow plastic, the legs, the tail. What I do feel is probably likely painted is like the little side pistons here for its legs. Although they've painted the top, unfortunately, they've sadly left off the bottom, as well as this bottom section here doesn't match the nice silver that they've added here for the legs. Speaking of the bridle, by the way, 
The bridle is a real string, so I'm glad to see that they actually used a real string. Wouldn't be able to pull this off with plastic, as it would have to be pre-molded, kind of shaped in a curl like this, and it just really wouldn't work. Real string is really the best way to go. Now, if this bothers you, if you don't like the idea that this string is just dangling here, one thing that's good about Strider is that you can open up its mouth, which is spring-activated, Wilbur! And you can actually just take the bridle off completely if you wanted to, and just have, have it a completely separate. And then you've got just the horse just on its own. I prefer really to have Strider displayed with the bridle, but if you prefer to have it left off, literally just because it's spring-loaded, you just open up the mouth, drop the bridle, and put the mouth back where it was. I really like the fact that they incorporate a spring-articulated mouth. Speaking of the articulation, by the way, on Strider, we're going to run through that right now. The head is on a ball joint. There's actually several different points. There's a ball joint here at the top where the head attaches first to the top of the neck. And there's a secondary ball joint further down on the neck. And I guess you could technically count this as articulation as well. Each of the individual legs have a real nice tight joint that moves back and forth this way. A hinge joint, in this case, for this foot, moves back this way. And there's also toe articulation as well, or hoof articulation as well. The back works more of a ratcheted joint than the front, but those move back and forth. The hind leg bends the opposite way, and then you also have the foot articulation or hoof articulation as well. So again, like if you wanted to, you could have Strider up on its hind legs, or you can reverse the steps and have actually Strider looking as if he's knocking somebody off, or even trying to knock off Fisto, who's actually inside the cockpit right now. And again, being that you do have the articulated display stand, you can then bring in the neck. Where did I put the neck? The neck is somewhere around here. You take yourself then the neck, plug it into place here, and then, yeah, you can have Strider in a different pose than just simply attaching him. Speaking, though, of the display stand, we're just going to bring this back right now. The only thing I would say is a criticism to Strider, and it's, it's very small. I like the look of the horse. I have no problems with the horse at all. Just get him standing right there. It's actually more so directed towards the display stand. I like, again, that you can integrate it here with Castle Grayskull, but even integrating it with Castle Grayskull or just having it on its own, I think the display stand is way too small. It needed to be a lot longer than what it is. And yeah, it would have me meant that Mattel would have had to mold extra plastic on the end of it, but it certainly would have a lot for much more clearance for the horse. Because again, when you put the horse on the display stand like that, you can see already like the horse sticks way too far off the edge. They only literally needed to add like, what, an inch, an inch and a half extra longer length to the end of that, where it would have actually made Strider balance a lot better on the display stand. And again, if you're going to slide it onto the back of Castle Grayskull, it would make then the horse stick out a little bit further and not look as if he's lying underneath one of the floors of Castle, which is unfortunately the case when you do plug it in place really digging the look of Stridor here. And the good thing about Stridor is that I found them at my local Toys R Us, so I didn't have to order it online. I just assumed being here in Canada, I would have to wait a little bit longer for newer Masters figures to pop up. And yeah, it still is the case with many of their figures. Still, it's not circulating well enough here in Canada, but was pleasantly surprised to go to my local, to or somewhat, somewhat local Toys R Us and find one Stridor on the shelf. Good thing I probably grabbed it too because there was no gentleman looking down that aisle as well looking at Masters figures. But Strider here set me back a little over $40 and I think that's about an on average price point that one would expect to pay for a Masters vehicle as I think with both the Wind Raider and the Land Shark they were sitting at around that $40 to $50 price point. For a $40 to $50 price what you're getting is a pretty articulated Strider well painted for the most part. There's still, unfortunately, the sacrifice parts lower down on its legs that didn't get the nice love of silver that the top of the legs got, but at least Strider does have swappable head plates. Those like the little helmets that go over top of its head. It does have a removable bridle, so if you didn't like the idea of a bridle just draping down, you just leave it off. For a character like Fisto, for example, posed in final looks looking like he's having a blast, I can only really be able to attach one of the bridle handles into his hand because the other hand is just a closed molded fist. He's named Fisto, after all. The figure also does have a couple of blast effects, firing effects that can be attached to the cannons. I just think they're more eyesores than anything else. If anything, I'm just going to be displaying Stridor here. Stri Stridor, not Strider. Displayed, I think, without the blast effects. But again, I always appreciate the fact that Mattel could include stuff like that. Also, an interactive part that can connect to Castle Grayskull. Not super successful. 
I don't know if you can even see it on the back of the packaging because Stridor is blocking it right now. They've just indicated at the bottom left-hand corner to slide in into the bottom of Castle Grayskull. It's just literally, it's sliding underneath that a little bit of allowance that's on the bottom of the play set. But if only again, like that plate, the actual display stand was a lot longer than what it was, not only I think would be better to be displaying Stridor on its, on its own, but I think also to connect it to Castle Grayskull, it wouldn't have the horse so close to the floors, which is unfortunately the problem. One of the downsides of having the display stand not as long as it really should be. Still a really nice looking vehicle. I don't know, again, are we considering this a vehicle? I'm going to consider it a vehicle. It's something that a figure sits inside. For that, I'm going to consider it a vehicle. I guess you could also say Battle Cat. Well, nobody's really sitting inside Battle Cat. They're sitting on top of Battle Cat. Okay, we could probably debate this all day. But what do you guys think of Stridor? Let me know down below in the comments section where you picked up the figure for yourself or based on this review and this review alone. As mentioned earlier, plugging this channel, certainly if you guys wanted to go back and have a look at some of my other Masters of the Universe reviews, there's a whole playlist covering off all of the territory of the Master Universe origin stuff. Lots of lots of interesting videos for you guys to check out and certainly keep your peepers peeled while we have wrapped up the review here of Stridor. There will be more reviews of the Master Universe line coming your way in the not so distant future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.